Hello, I'm Neil Clark, and in this talk I'm going to talk about self-organizing maps. Now, the self-organizing map is uh, a method which is uh, useful for visualizing structure in high-dimensional data. In this sense, it's similar to principal component analysis that we talked about in an earlier uh, talk, in that it attempts to take the high-dimensional uh, data and project it down into a lower dimensional surface which tries to capture uh, as much structure, as much of the high dimensional structure of the data as possible in a lower dimensional space. Um, one of the differences is that this low dimensional um, uh, surface with self-organizing maps, there is no constraint that this surface be linear. Self-organizing maps has some strong similarities with uh, what is called k-means clustering. In fact, it can be thought of as a, simply a constrained version of k-means clustering. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by describing uh, the k-means uh, uh, method, and then from that I'm going to um, develop uh, into the, the self-organizing map. And I'm going to show you this in a, um, a simple three-dimensional data set. First, k-means clustering. Let's consider a, a, a multi-dimensional data set which has elements x, i. Uh, now, each of these x, i, uh, they have uh, they have uh, multiple features, um, so that you can consider them as residing in a, in a in a space which has a number of dimensions equal to the number of features, and you can also uh, think of, uh, of the distance between two of the uh, da these data elements. Perhaps you might like to think um, as uh, as gene expression. You know, each x might be a, a gene expression profile, and each gene expression profile is consists of the expression of many genes. And we can also um, we can also think about the distance between two gene expression profiles uh, as simply as the the distance in the in the high dimensional space, the Euclidean distance in the high dimensional space. Now, with the k-means procedure, we um, we we first have define a, a number k, and this is going to be the number of uh, clusters that we're going to divide the data up into. So, usually, you have some idea of what k should be, uh, or you have some kind of you have some method for determining what key should be. And we're going to introduce um, a number uh, k uh, of prototypes or centers and they each of these have a position uh, m sub k. Then each data point becomes associated with the closest cluster, closest in the Euclidean sense. Then what we do is we look for the the partition of the of the data uh, into these uh, clusters, we've tried to find the, the, the positions of the centers which optimally cluster the data uh, in, in the sense that they minimize the, the sum of the squared errors between the data points and their associated clusters. So this is written uh, as an equation here. So what this means is we're, we're essentially trying to find the optimal way to, to, to cluster uh, the data. So here I have a, a movie illustrating this procedure. Um, the movie starts with uh, five centers, each with a different color. And these centers are chosen randomly. And then we iterate a procedure which tries to move these centers uh, in such a way to, uh, that, that the sum of the, the distances of each associated data point from the cluster, from the center, is, is minimized. And you can see what, what is happening is that you know, the, the green point is identifying the cluster there in the top right, and the yellow point is identifying the cluster in the bottom right, uh, and so on. So that was k-means clustering. Um, this is going to form the basis of self-organizing maps. I'm going to go into it in a bit more detail. Um, but I'm going to do it by applying self-organizing maps to a specific data set. Um, and because self-organizing maps is not constrained to be linear, I, it's, it's, 
I think it's good to uh, use a, a data set which is strongly uh, nonlinear. So here is a, the data set that we're going to use. Um, uh, so the, it's, you know, the, the points are scattered around a sphere. Uh, and we have, you'll notice that we have several um, uh, clusters of points it, it, it illustrated with different colors. So first we can apply uh, we can apply k-means clustering to this data. We can choose a number of k which is equal to the number of clusters that we have and iterate it and we can look we can iterate the method I've not described the, the, the method just yet but I will I will do that uh, shortly uh, and we can look at with each iteration of the of the algorithm what is the the, 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 the total error which is the the, the sum of the squared distances for, of each data point from its associated center. And we're trying to minimize this distance. So, you, And here we've, we've ran the algorithm with a number of different uh, initial conditions. Um, you can see that, uh, generally speaking, the error uh, falls into a local minimum. Now, just for reference, we're going to... Uh, I'll show you here a, a principal component analysis plot of our uh, example data. Uh, and you can see the uh, principal component analysis has done a good job of, of separating the, the blue and the red clusters, but the, um, the green and the orange are, are, are mixed up uh, here. And this is presumably because this, these data points actually fall on a sphere which has been flattened in this, in this analysis. And in the flattening process, the orange and the green have been, have been mixed together. So here I'm just going to illustrate what happens uh, as we iterate the self-organizing map algorithm. So we've got a small, uh, short movie here where we can show the initial conditions. Um, the initial condition is that we start off with the PCA, the principal and ana component analysis surface, which we have populated with a regular array of centers. The next thing we can do is we can show the, the evolution of this of the self-organizing map surface as we iterate self-organizing map uh, algorithm. You can see there it, uh, it jiggles about, but then eventually the surface tends to curve around and, and tries to fit the, 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 the sphere-like structure of the data. So this is kind of gives you some intuition of what, what the self-organizing map surface is trying to do. It's trying to find a surface which ultimately fits the, the nonlinear structure in the data. So now I can give you, uh, I'll go into a little bit more detail about uh, how the self-organizing map um, iterative algorithm works. It works by scanning across all your data points and uh, updating the position of the centers. So as I illustrated uh, in the previous uh, uh, movie, the, the initial position of the centers is a regular array placed on the principal component analysis surface. And then what we do is we, we just iterate, we go through all the data points and we iterate this simple uh, algorithm. For each data point, xi, we find the closest in Euclidean space um, center, which we'll call M mk. Then, on the self-organizing map, you find all the, the the centers which are within a given uh, distance of the of, of nk, and this is the distance not in the Euclidean sense, but in the self in the distance in terms of the surface uh, of the self-organizing map surface. So the way to think about that is if um, in the in the in the lattice of of centers, um, if nk has a position i comma j in that in that regular lattice. Then we can calculate the distance between uh, i primed and j primed of every other center and then all those centers which are below a, a particular distance, call it r, we then we're going to update their positions. We're going to change their position from their current position to their current position plus alpha, which is a parameter called the learning rate, which multiplies the vector uh, the vector difference between the data point under consideration 
and the closest center, mk. This second step can be um, done in a slightly more sophisticated fashion, where instead of simply being proportional to the uh, uh, this uh, this vector, um, you can make it. Uh, you can devise uh, a function uh, which is a, a of the of the self-organizing map distance too. So here we can look at. We can take another uh, view of the, the iteration of the self-organizing map um, algorithm by looking at how the points, uh, the data points, uh, are, um, are projected onto the self-organizing map surface as we iterate the algorithm. And you can see uh, in the final state where the, the self-organizing map has, has converged, um, we can see there's a very clear separation of each of the, of the clusters and in this case, the, the red and the orange clusters are no longer uh, flattened into each other. They are very clearly separated. And this sort of illustrates one of the advantages of this approach um, in the, when, when your data is strongly nonlinear. Um, this, this is a limitation of the principal component analysis approach. Now, uh, one way to choose, there are a number of parameters that we've chosen, uh, this value, uh, the value r, uh, and so on. Um, and we want to consider how uh, one way that we might choose those parameters. Um, the one way to think about that is to think about um, uh, the, the, the error. So, which, so remember by the error in k-means, it's the same here, is the, the sum of the squared distances of each data point from its associated center. So this is kind of a measure of how well uh, the, your, your k-means or self-organizing map is fitting the data. Now because self-organizing map is a constrained version of k-means, we would expect its error to be larger than the k-means because it's going to, in a certain sense, suffer from the constraints. K-means is, is freer to minimize the error in another way. But we would hope that if we've chosen the parameters well, we would hope that this error is not too much, you know, not, is not uh, tremendously greater than the k-means error. So here what we've done is I've shown for this solution uh, to this problem, this example problem, uh, the blue curve shows the, the squared error as a function of the, uh, of the iteration of the algorithm, and the orange line at the bottom indicates the k-means error. So you can see in, in intermediate uh, parts of the, of the iteration, the error is, is very large, but as the self-organizing map converges, it, convert, it converges to an error which is, although greater than the k-means error, is not um, enormously so. So this can gives us a, a, a feeling that we've chosen the parameters uh, reasonably. So in summary, uh, the self-organizing map is uh, a, a method of dimensional reduction. It's a way of looking at high-dimensional data, which has the advantage that it's, it's not constrained uh, to be uh, linear, so that the surface uh, can, can uh, uh, adapt to the nonlinearities in your data.